Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed about near-death experiences. Clinically dead isn't dead. Many people believe that near-death experiences are evidence of life after death. There's a big problem with that belief, and it's a fairly obvious one. In fact, it's right there in the name of the phenomenon near-death experience. You're not dead when you have one. In fact, if you're having a near-death experience, take that as a clue that you're not dead. You might be clinically dead, but modern medicine no longer considers clinical death to be synonymous with legal death, or what you might term accurately, if a bit redundantly, permanent death. How does an experience you have while you're still alive tell you anything at all about what happens, if anything, after you die? The case for NDEs as evidence of the afterlife gets even weaker when you consider that they can happen to people nowhere near death. Near-death experiences can be induced in people who aren't clinically dead and are in no imminent danger of death. The out-of-body experience, the tunnel, the light, the feeling of reviewing past events of your life, encounters with dead loved ones and religious figures, all the familiar tropes of the near-death experience have been experienced by people who are nowhere close to death. These experiences can be triggered by brain stimulation conducted under controlled laboratory conditions or by taking drugs that cause hallucinations like ketamine. That is, if you're lucky, because not everyone has them. Near-death experiences, not drugs like ketamine. Only about 15 to 18 percent of people who might have near-death experiences, either as a result of being clinically dead or participating in one of those aforementioned laboratory experiments, actually have them. If NDEs are not just phenomena of our brains, but are our souls actually temporarily crossing over into a real afterlife, shouldn't we expect more people in extremis to have them? Am I really supposed to believe that the afterlife exists because one out of every six people who survive being close to death say they had a trippy dream about it? Most people see what they expect to see. Near-death experiences are a lot like alien abduction stories. One is pretty much the same as another, and they're all so vague that you can't take that agreement as evidence of anything other than how uncreative the people reporting them are. A relatively small number of people report having hellish experiences, but the vast majority report feeling loved and at peace, encountering family members and religious figures. And here's the thing. Christians report seeing visions of Jesus. Muslims report seeing visions of Muhammad. In other words, most people see that which their particular religious background has prepared them to see after death. Those who consider near-death experiences to be evidence of an actual afterlife insist that this means that all religions, with their various competing versions of heaven, are somehow simultaneously true, a pluralistic proposition that is ruled out by the religions of the people having the experiences. I love that. They prove nothing about the soul or the afterlife. Near-death experiences take place inside the brain. If you have had one, it doesn't mean that your soul popped up to heaven for a quick visit so you'd know where everything is before you make your big move. It means you had a dream. And lots of us have dreams all the time. Every once in a while, I'll have a dream about the man I call Pap, my paternal grandfather who died in 2004. I don't consider these dreams to be visitations from Pap's spirit. I look at them as gifts that I give to myself, vivid experiences shared with this man I so loved and miss so much to this very day, conjured from memory and imagination. And I think near-death experiences might be something similar. Perhaps some people who find themselves near death, or at least think they are, choose unconsciously to give themselves a similar sort of gift, to dream of the life they've lived and the life they hope is yet to come. And if that life yet to come is just a dream, and it probably is, that doesn't mean that the dream itself has no value. Knowing that my pap is dead and gone doesn't make my dreams of him mean less. It makes them even more precious to me. And I imagine I would feel the same way about a dream of life, dreamed as life itself is slipping finally away. 
The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time.